Irrigated agriculture is the largest sector of groundwater use in the country, consuming about three quarters of the 83 billion gallons of groundwater that are pumped daily. This groundwater is obtained by pumping nearly 400,000 irrigation wells. Most groundwater withdrawals come from a small number of prominent aquifers. Because the rate of these withdrawals now surpasses the rate of groundwater recharge, these aquifers are in overdraft. This has devastating consequences for the many communities that rely upon groundwater for their livelihood. Here, the impact of groundwater level declines on a system of groundwater-fed lakes, known as the Lincoln Creek Drainage System, is depicted by a local news crew using video footage obtained on two separate occasions. After storing water for thousands of years, the Lincoln Creek Lake System became dry during the 1980s and has remained so ever since. This situation presents unique challenges to the management of groundwater resources, because the demands that are made on the resource are not met by modern rates of groundwater recharge. The Columbia River Basalt Group, or CRBG, within which the four counties of the Columbia Basin Groundwater Management Area lie, is the primary source of groundwater in the Columbia Basin. The CRBG aquifer system covers 60,000 square miles in the states of Washington, Oregon, and Idaho, and comprises over 300 basalt flows that were deposited millions of years ago. These basalt flows are grouped into major formations known as the Grand Ronde, the Wanapum, and the Saddle Mountain. Each of these formations is itself comprised of many individual basalt flow zones, some of which cover literally thousands of square miles. But how does a prolific aquifer form underground within solid crystalline rock? As a lava flow cools, it forms a very dense crystalline interior. As gases escape the cooling flow, the lava flow forms a more porous, textured material referred to as vesicular basalt, aptly called flow tops or basalt interflow zones. These porous materials form aquifers sandwiched between each dense basalt flow interior. This is where irrigation and other wells draw their water from. In the Columbia River basalts, these aquifers can be very prolific. However, very little water can move between the aquifers because of the dense basalt flow interiors. So where does the water come from that fills these flow top aquifers? There's been a lot of studies of the geology of the region that have shown how the rocks have been laying down over the years through this whole thick sequence of 300 or so basalt flows. And one of the things that they show is that there's some pretty large time periods between one flow erupting and then the next one, maybe thousands of years or even 100,000 years coming along later and flowing on top of that. Well, during that time period, what has happened is that soils build up on top of that first flow, and maybe you've got streams coming through there, and the climate may have been different at times, so you might have had a lot of rainfall, and so you can accumulate water in those zones. The next flow comes along, and yeah, although it's hot, you don't lose all the water that's in that zone and essentially gets trapped there. A major source of groundwater recharge was the Missoula floods, a series of cataclysmic floods that periodically swept across eastern Washington and down the Columbia River at the end of the last ice age. Well, obviously you go out there today and you don't see any of that water, but it was a big pile of water moving through. And there were places where that could help recharge 
some of the basalt zones as well as some of the shallower sedimentary zones, as soon as the Ice Age ended, that was all gone. The Columbia River formed the channel that it has today, and for the last 10 to 12,000 years, that ancestral channel of the Columbia has had no water appreciably moving through it. One very evident effect of these floods is evidenced by the scablands that were carved by the enormous power of the flowing floodwaters. These floodwaters recharged the flowtop aquifers in discrete locations where the water was able to infiltrate. However, the time that was required for these floods to penetrate into and recharge the flowtop aquifers is many times longer than the time it has taken to pump the water back out. The Columbia Basin Groundwater Management Area, or GUAMA for short, is tasked with developing understanding of the location, quality, and sources and uses of groundwater. Because aquifers store and transmit groundwater hundreds or thousands of feet beneath us, one of the very best ways to develop understanding of the groundwater system is to collect data from wells. This information includes rock cores that help us understand the properties of the aquifer itself and samples of the groundwater that can be tested in a laboratory. Since 1998, the Columbia Basin Groundwater Management Area has collected many different types of samples from thousands of wells. To date, the Guama and its leading geological consultants, GSI, have mapped over 30 major flow top aquifers in the region. Here is shown a simplified depiction of the deep and shallow ground Ron and the deep and shallow Wanapum formations. In 2010 alone, the Guama and its consultants collected geochemistry samples from over 500 wells, including a large number of the 2,500 agricultural wells that are in use throughout the region. Analysis of common chemical isotopes from these samples, such as carbon-14 and tritium, can be used to estimate and then map the age of the groundwater. Here, color is used to depict the relative age of the water obtained from the sampled wells. Although the ages range from quite young to very old, it is evident that most of the water throughout the area is very old, and is not recharged by young water under present-day conditions. Not surprisingly, the relatively small number of wells that do exhibit young water pump from the shallowest basalts. This is seen more clearly when we look at the system from the bottom, peeling away the deeper layers. We're starting to see a very consistent picture in terms of what all the geochemical signatures say and also how they seem to relate to differences that we see in the rates of water level decline in shallow basalts versus somewhat deeper basalts versus really deep basalt intervals. And what it's telling us is that the deeper you go in the basalt system, the more isolated those water-bearing intervals in the basalt are from what's going on up on the ground surface. And the more they're isolated, the less recharge they get and the slower that that recharge occurs. And essentially you get to a point where you're so deep in the system that there's virtually no recharge whatsoever to speak of. This information can be used to map the groundwater age throughout the region. Here, this is demonstrated by depicting the groundwater age in each of the major flow tops. These sampling results further support the geologic interpretation that aquifer units are vertically disconnected and that movement of water between them is very limited. This may seem surprising given the presence of large rivers throughout the region. For example, the Columbia River is the largest river in the Pacific Northwest and the fourth largest river in the United States. It is over a thousand miles long and drains an area the size of France. However, the rivers in the region, including the Columbia River, are generally hundreds or thousands of feet 
above the majority of the flow top aquifers and are not directly connected with them. In those areas where the Columbia River is connected with a flow top aquifer, the benefit to a nearby pumping well depends on whether the well intercepts the right flow zone, how far the groundwater has to travel, and how long this takes. The East Low Canal is arguably one of the most important sources of water throughout the region, serving the East and South Columbia Basin Irrigation Districts. Water is pumped into the East Low Canal from large reservoirs to the north. Generally speaking, the canal then runs from north to south, bisecting a large portion of the Guama region. To understand the age of groundwater with increasing distance from East Low Canal, samples were obtained by the Guama from many wells around the canal and their isotopic signatures analyzed. A clear picture emerges, with a higher proportion of wells exhibiting younger water located close to the canal, and with the age of the water increasing in wells located at greater distances from the canal. Plotting these data reveals very strong correlations in both the carbon and tritium age estimates with increasing distance from the canal, indicating that the canal is a source of recent groundwater recharge. Given the reliance of the agricultural economy on groundwater, the implications of declining resources are abundantly clear. However, implications for the broader economy should not be underestimated because groundwater is also the primary source of water for both industrial and municipal purposes. The Columbia Basin Groundwater Management Area encompasses 25 cities with estimated populations of over 200,000 people. Water levels in many of the city wells throughout the Guama have exhibited the same precipitous declines as irrigation and municipal wells, since they draw from the same limited resources. The Guama has made a concerted effort to sample all municipal wells throughout the region. By combining information about the distribution of the aquifer layers and details about well construction, we can map the wells in the vicinity of each city and the aquifers from which they draw water. Here, the results are depicted for one particular city. By sampling municipal wells and analyzing those samples for carbon-14, tritium, hexafluoride, and chlorofluorocarbons, it is possible not only to estimate how young or how old the water is, but what fraction of the water is young or old. Hence, it can be determined how much new water is mixed with the old water. In a manner similar to that used on the regional scale, we can map the groundwater age and the fraction of younger water available at the local scale as well. In doing so, we have observed that throughout the area of the Guama, 23 of the 25 cities evaluated are pumping primarily old water that has not been recharged in thousands of years. The biggest issue the cities have is knowledge. They don't have an understanding of what the significance and magnitude of their problem is, which is one of the values we try to bring to the discussion, is to tell them uh, how much risk factor they're in, uh, what the potential lifespan of the water they're currently using would be, and where they're possible options what might be in the future. Many of the cities uh, are fairly close to some type of catastrophic failure and we hope that we can find solutions for those cities uh, before that occurs. A critical step in quantifying the locations and sources of groundwater and developing solutions for the future is the development of a mathematical model of the aquifers and the groundwater that they contain. 
The Guama has enlisted the help of specialized groundwater consultants who have tackled similar problems in the United States and overseas. The Guama has for several years supported the construction and application of a mathematical groundwater model of the four county area. The model was developed by internationally recognized leaders in the simulation of groundwater using highly specialized software written by their own experts together with specialists at the United States Geological Survey and other organizations. The four counties of the Guama are not alone in their struggle to manage limited water resources in a sustainable yet economically beneficial manner. The region does face unique challenges that result from the compartmentalization of the basalt aquifers, the great age of the groundwater, and the very low rates of present-day recharge. Guama is actively collaborating with world-leading groundwater experts to provide a framework for decision makers to develop solutions to the problem of limited water resources in the four-county area.